Hey there guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Triangle Diagnostics. I uh, want to cover two quick things real quick before we get started on uh, today's project. So thing number one is I just want to say sorry. Um, I haven't had a chance to film a whole lot lately. We've been super, super slammed here at work and it just, things just haven't lined up, lined up right to facilitate that. Uh, thing number two is I have some new video editing software and that's thanks in part to my buddy Brad. Uh, he actually put me onto it and what I'm hoping it's going to enable us to do is to actually put scan data inserts into the video, you know, potentially wiring diagrams and stuff like that. And I really think it's going to up the quality. Um, that being said, he is active on YouTube and I think you guys should really check his channel out. Uh, his channel name is Flamaz is how I say it. F-L-M-M-A-Z. Uh, there's a story behind the name, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it for you. He'll have to tell you. But uh, this guy's a Ford dealer tech and he specializes in power stroke diesels and you know all, all manner of light duty diesel work. And as far as the quality of work that he puts behind the repairs he does, man, it is top notch and excellent channel to check out, especially if you're into diesels, especially if you like power strokes. So uh, that's for you, Brad, appreciate it, man. So anyways, car we're gonna be working on today, 2014 Ford Transit and it's got a door lock problem. Uh, the doors will unlock, but they won't lock from either the fob or the switch on the doors. So let's take a quick look at that, uh, sort of see what it's doing, feel it out. And I kinda wanna start with the scan tool first. I don't really know anything about it other than it won't lock, but it unlocks, so. Um, this being a 2014, I think scan tool is a good place to start. So yeah, let's take a look at what this thing's doing. So I've got the key on, it's kinda dinging a little bit in the background, you know, it's whatever. But I can hit the unlock. You hear that kind of faint click. Uh, there's no knob on the door to actually, you know, get a good visual representation of the door locking and unlocking. But if I hit lock, and we heard that. Let me let me actually uh, let me actually shut the door. So with the door shut, you know, really what I would want to hear is I would want to hear that same clicky clacky. Let me stick my head in here. So I'm hitting the lock button now. I don't hear crap. There's unlock. I hear the tap of the unlock and there's lock. So we've got no lock action at all. Let's uh, take a look at the scan tool. So we've got the key on. We're gonna go ahead and uh, boot up the scan tool. I realize the dinging is kind of annoying, but uh, just gonna have to deal with it. I'm going to scanner. And I'm hoping this doesn't take a long time, but I kind of want to get you in through through everything I'm doing. So going to Ford. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the automatic ID. I think it should go pretty quick. Man, that dinging is annoying. I'm using a road lav lav mic that's what i use for my audio so i'm hoping it uh hoping it doesn't pick up that dinging if it does sorry this is the shot that i wanted to get in order for me to do it the door's got to be dinging Ugh. oh man there we go we got our vehicle so i don't know how these door locks are set up so I'm gonna do a full system code scan. I don't know if they're gonna be ran off a door module or off the body computer, or maybe they're not computer controlled at all. This being a 2014, I want to say that they are. Um, one thing I can say going into this is I don't think we're gonna have a switch issue. And the reason for that is for one, our unlock works. And for two, when we hit that lock, you know, we can hear the, uh, we can hear the alarm chime going off. You hear that? So sort of what that tells me is that the switch itself is functional. So I'm not 100% on what we're going to find. I'm not sure how this system is set up. I'm not sure how it's designed. So, you know, all that being said, I definitely think the scan tool is a good place to sort of, sort of start this, start this thing out. So, let's say we have a few engine codes. Um, we have a U code for the BCM. That's a little concerning. Going down to the transmission, have that same uh, BCM U code. Get some more U codes in the ABS module. I'm going to start this up. This dinging is. <sighs> oh, 
Oh boy. Let me jump this thing off. Now that I have that problem remedied, 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 let's continue looking at these faults. One quick comment, you know, so this this car isn't owned. This car hasn't been sold yet. It's actually, a, you know, sitting, it's from a used car dealership. And they don't get driven very much. So the batteries are just about always discharged on these things. And I don't know, just ranting. So, keep going. Got some stuff in the BCM, holy crap. B1108, driver door central locking motor. B1109, passenger door central locking motor. Rear door driver side central locking motor. Rear door passenger side central locking motor. Uh, left hand low beam, license plate light, left positions light. Uh, Pat's antenna, Pat's key. So a number of different uh, potentially, potentially related door lock faults in the BCM. We can see some of those listed in the tire pressure monitor as well. That's probably because the tire pressure monitor is integrated into the body control module. Um, I kind of want to take a look at one of these, one of these BCM fault codes. Uh, we'll do the B1108. So I'm going to get back out of here. Let me go to body computer. Oh man, we don't have any uh, we don't have any troubleshooting features, so that kind of stinks. Let me see. One thing we can do is a functional test. Let me go back to the body computer. Let's see what we have for functional tests. Nothing. Battery monitor system reset and a TPMS training mode. So not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of bi-directional capability there. I'm going to go to the driver door module. Go to display codes, memory codes, key on engine off. Uh, no communication not equipped. Uh, this module may be optional. Let's try the passenger side real quick. Door module passenger. Codes, memory codes. And no com, not equipped. So it's possible that um, it's possible these door locks are not computer controlled at all. They could just be set up, you know, in some old school fashion. Uh, that being said, I think the easiest place to go now would be to a wiring diagram and uh, sort of analyze the circuit, analyze how it works, and determine what our easiest test locations are going to be and what our easiest first checks are going to be. So I've got two different diagrams pulled up. Um, each of them are three pages. And I'm going to attempt to put them right up here for you, at least the, the areas that I'm focused on and the areas that I think matter. So it definitely appears that uh, this system uh, kind of, there's sort of two different styles. Uh, one would be a computer controlled style that would uh, utilize door modules. Um, I don't believe that that is applicable to our vehicle based on the fact that we had no communication to them via the scan tool. So at least initially, we're going to attack this as if this is a run-of-the-mill uh, non-computer controlled door lock system. So that being said, let me figure out which one of these diagrams is our guy. And I'm looking for the one that is not, that does not have modules on it. And it looks like, yep, it looks like this is not our one. So, I'm going to throw that one up there. So the first thing I'm looking for is I'm just looking for the, uh, I'm just looking for the actual door latches themselves. And I can see two of them right here for the sliding doors. I'm going to follow those up. And it looks like, uh, it looks like both wires that actually go to the motors themselves, both come off of a common splice. Now I'm going to follow that splice over. So it goes off the page here. Now I just I'm just concerned with where they come from, really. And it looks like, yeah, okay. So it looks like all of our lock and our unlock actuation is coming from two relays. We have the center unlock relay, 
and we have the center lock relay. So the center unlock relay, let me follow this down and make sure I'm right. Yeah, depending on polarity, it's gonna provide power to one side of the door latch motors and uh, the lock relay is gonna do the same thing in the opposing polarity in order to you know, lock the doors. So what we know is that our unlock features work. Our unlock functionality is good. So I'm not worried about the unlock circuit um, whatsoever. What I'm worried about is the center lock relay circuit. Um, that's located in the body computer, body bottom right center of dash. So it's gonna be terrible to get to. Uh, taking a quick look at the relay itself, looks like fuse number 70 is what's actually providing um, load side feed to the center lock relay. So it's got a splice right before the relay and that's providing both load side power and control side power. The uh, load side ground, or excuse me, the control side ground is actually provided by a computer inside of the body computer. So to a degree, it is computer controlled. Um, taking a look at this again, you know, just a little bit more in depth, it looks like in its normally open position that uh, the load terminal goes to ground and it goes through a fuse. Kind of curious, you don't, you don't often see that on this. Looks like fuse 83, then it goes to a ground. So that being said, looks like these motors are gonna have ground on both sides all the time. And then depending on which relay is being energized from the body computer will determine what side of these, uh, these door latch actuators are actually receiving power and uh, whether the door latches are going to be locking or unlocking. So that being said, knowing a little bit more about how this system is controlled, I think the best place to go at this point would be the lock relay itself and start doing some checks there. Um, initially, I'm looking for two power feeds, and then ideally I want to have a ground from the microcomputer inside of the body control module when I press the switch into the lock position or hit the fob into the lock position. So let's go figure out where this box is. So I've located the body computer on this vehicle and it is not the easiest to get to. It is also not the easiest to film. So I want to show you its location. It's down here in the passenger floorboard. Um, there is a little shield that goes up here. Uh, it's just held on with some push pins, but you pull that out and you can access the front of this fuse block, which is the body computer. So, um, yeah, that's where it's at. Let me see if I can get a decent shot of what I'm going to be doing under here. Um, I think that's going to be the hardest thing. So this is going to be the best shot I can get you with how tucked away this thing is, but uh, we're focusing on the center lock relay. And the, uh, the first thing that I'm concerned with is fuse number 70, so I'm going to attempt I'm going to attempt to find that on this block. And let me see, it looks like they're labeled. But the numbers are super hard to see. I'm going to have to get my head in the way real quick. Fuse 60, 69. Would this be fuse 70? So according to this, I think this is fuse 70. So I'm touching, touching one side right now, touching the other side. Um, it's a 20 amp fuse that does match our diagram. So, okay, not worried about that one. Um, the next thing is fuse number 83. Uh, that is a 20 amp fuse. And that's what's actually going to control the ground. Remember, it's sort of weird the way they did this one. And I think that fuse is 82. This one up here. Is that showing up? So, I've got my test light going to ground. I don't want this to light in the lock position. Not lighting on that side. And not lighting on that side. So, what does that tell us? Well, we're not suspecting an issue with, uh, with the feed to the relay. Uh, we're definitely concerned more about its controls and maybe potentially the relay itself. So what I want to do is I want to find this relay and I'm hoping, hoping it's not built into the, uh, to the fuse box. Knowing my luck, it's going to be. So let me see. I 
I may, I may have to pull this fuse block out. It's got some tabs on the bottom. Let me see if I can, let me see what doing that does. So there's one wire here that's somewhat tight. And I don't feel any, I don't feel any relays on the back side of this box. So what that tells me is that most likely this relay is going to be built into the block itself. So, that being said, let's go back to the scan tool. I almost want to clear all of those codes out. Um, I'm wondering if they were potentially set for low voltage reasons. Um, I, I also may want to look up what those fault codes mean. So, before we get too carried away with this box here, let's go back to the scan tool, see if we can find some good data. So back on the scan tool, I just want to go back to the body computer real quick. I'm going to go back to these codes, memory codes. Remember, we had quite a few of them, driver door, central lock, central locking motor, command and position, not reachable. And these are all pending. Control module, ground, A, circuit, open. Hmm. So what I'm going to do real quick, because we didn't have any troubleshooter features on this anyways, I'm just going to take a snapshot of this. All these codes. Snap those two. Snap that one too. And now what I want to do is I want to clear these codes out of here. So codes cleared. Go back and reread them. And no codes. So I guess my question now is, do the door locks work? So we can still see that the switch command is there. Let me actually uh, close the door. Passenger door is closed too. Let me go close that one. So now all the doors on the vehicle are closed. So when I hit the lock button, um, really the door should lock. So I'm just reaching in here and hitting lock. And there's still nothing happening. There's unlock, there's lock, nothing. Definitely hear the click with the unlock. Going back to the scan tool, I'm just gonna reread trouble codes real quick. And wow, looks like all of these codes for the doors have reset. Next step, let's figure out what these things mean. So, um, I went on Identifix and I went on All Data and I attempted to find some information related to these trouble codes. And here's the thing, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any information whatsoever related to these trouble codes, uh, the ones in question. B1108, B1109, B110A, and B110B. Um, so I tried to do a little bit of Google Gnostics, looked around online for these trouble codes and couldn't find anything there either. I mean, this is a 2014 vehicle. They haven't been around for very long. So information's not really gonna be out there. Um, I guess, one thing I kind of want to do is I, I just so, sort of want to look at the code descriptions at, at their face value. Driver door, central locking motor, commanded position, not reachable. Current DTC, B1108. Now, is that a fault related to the positions? Um, let's say the body computer commanded, or at least it thought that it commanded all of these doors to lock and it didn't receive that input back from the uh, from the position switches and maybe that's what sets this fault code I'm, I'm not sure I'm not certain but we have that for all four doors I want to go back I want to go to data inside of the body computer um, looks like we're going to go to body data I just want to see see what I have here. So 
So all door unlock off, all door lock off. I'm gonna customize this data list. I'm only gonna select ones that seem relevant. All door unlock, central door lock switch, central lock status. Anything that has to do with doors. really seeing anything else. We'll do some trunk lid stuff. So I think it's going to be about it. So all door lock off, all door unlock off, central lock status unlocked, trunk lift gate release output off, trunk lid unlock button stuck false, trunk lift gate release switch off, central door lock switch depressed. So let's go back to the car. I want to see how these data parameters respond to us actually locking and unlocking the doors. So while we're taking a look at these data parameters, I'm just going to reach in here. I'm going to hit the unlock first. So it looks like we're seeing a response in the all door unlock data parameter. We can see that here if I graph that. So I'm going to hit the lock, 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 lock. Hit lock again. Hit unlock. Hit lock. Nothing happening. Both data pads are responding. That tells me that the switch is able to communicate properly with the body control module. Let's look at the central lock status. Right now it's saying locked. Now we're unlocked. Now we're locked unlocked. That's with me actually actuating the switches. The best I can tell the best I can tell is that the body computer is attempting to put this command out. It's attempting to lock these doors and what I believe is happening is they're just not locking. So I think we need to go back, we need to focus more on the body computer uh, potentially it's looking like a bad body control module. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Let's uh, take another look and see. So what I've got here is I've got a connector, connector view of this connector right here, this uh, gray with a brown wire, the one that comes off the lock relay. And what I want to do is I want to go in there back to that stupid box. I want to find this connector. I want to find this pin. And I want to start doing some checks. I want to see, you know, if we are in fact getting power there when we're uh, hitting the lock switch on the body computer. So we need to go dig up this connector. So this is going to be another very difficult shot to get. Um, I'm going to turn the key off and pull it out of the ignition. And I've got this, I've got this connector in view here that's hopefully going to help me identify this thing. So pin one is gray with brown. That's the one we're looking for. Gray with brown on a pin one. And I'm wondering which one of these connectors is it. Um, see, the only, the only diagram I could find was this one. Let me see. It doesn't give me a color for the connector either. Man, that is a bummer. So finding this is really just going to be, it's going to be trial and error. So, what also sort of stinks is you got to cut these zip ties off. Someone's been on this connector before. Maybe a few of them. I don't know. This one has a zip tie still there. Some of these other ones don't. So, okay. Let's not get off track. We want to find gray with brown. I'm going to start with this one. You're seeing how this thing unplugs. So it needs to go up, which means I need to squeeze it and pry up at the same time. See if I can identify pin one on here. Pin 21 is a brown with green. 
see, this connector doesn't even have 21 pins on it. It only has two rows of pins, so I know this one's not it. That would mean that this one maybe is our guy. So, same thing. Just gonna pinch the sides of that, and slide that up, and slide it out, and look at it. Can I get to the back side of this? I can, it's a little tight. I'm sorry that you can't see too well. I can see, I don't wanna pull this cover off unless I'm sure it's my connector. So I can see a yellow with blue, and I can see a yellow. Oh, well, that's all I can see. I can't, I can't spin it around enough. Let me see. Oh, something tells me that's not my connector either. And uh, I don't think there's any way for me to get this farther down out of here, but this is a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. This has too many pins. This isn't a 20 pin connector, so no way that's our guy. Connector on the back side, no. I mean it can't be this little one. There's nothing else. There's nothing else in it. Let me see. Let's try this one up here. I'm sorry about the poor angle, but this is uh, this is hard for me to do. Okay, this one looks more like it. Oh yeah, pin one. Can I see it? I think this is our guy here. That's a possible though. Let's go to this other one here. Let's see how many pins are on this connector. Oh, this one actually might be it. It's missing a lot of uh it's missing a lot of its pins in the right places. I think this one, oh, I think this one might be it. Man, it is, it's tough to tell. It's like, which one do you pull off? You don't want to waste a bunch of time. There is, is there any way to get this farther down? I'm just trying to feel up here for any plastic fasteners. What's gonna suck is having to get them all back in. This is as far down as I can pull it. Pin one is there. It looks like gray with brown. Let me look at my diagram. Yeah, gray with brown. So this is our connector here. So this other one, I'm gonna get that plug back in. Easier said than done. So I gotta tell you guys, I am uh, I am six foot one. That's how tall I am. And I've got a bad back from the army. The army uh, the army did my back no favors. And working underneath dashboards. Oh, it it really just it really just kills me. So this is absolutely our connector. I think what I'm going to do instead of Pulling this little harness, what the hell? There's some cut wires on here. That's weird. See those? Some wires that are cut. Is that coming across? Look right there. It's a cut wire. I wonder why that wire's cut, huh? I wonder what that wire even goes to. And why would it be cut is the question. Oh man, it was tied into this uh, 
It was tied into something. So is this one. Oh, you know what? This one here that's cut, it's tied into our gray brown, our lock switch wire. Isn't that interesting? Almost just want to uh, almost just want to undo this tape all the way and make sure it's not broken or something. Something silly. Let me see. I need a I need a kniff to uh, persuade this tape to to do what I want it to do. I'm blocking your shot. What is this wire doing here? That was some that was some sketchy stuff. It's soldered. Is that showing up on the camera? I get a shot of this so look at this wire this is the gray brown wire this is the what would be the power feed to all of the actuators in the lock position and it's got this uh, it's got this little rat tail that's been t-spliced into it uh, someone soldered it there and then they wrapped electrical tape around it I wonder I wonder if that's our problem. I don't know. Let me get you. Let me get you set back up, sort of. Hopefully you can. <laughs> Man, this is difficult. Let me get you. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm just wondering if. Oh, it's not even soldered. My bad. I thought it was soldered. Well, no, it is soldered. Just poorly soldered. The wire's still connected. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a clamp fitting there. Or, you know, a little alligator clip. Just, you know what? I'm actually, I'm just going to use a jumper wire. And what I can do is I can run that jumper wire down to my test light. And then I can see if we have power here in the lock position. So it's got this, this little jumper wire. Gonna hook the jaws of it around there. Now, an issue with doing this is that you know, obviously, this module is providing power on this wire. So, if that bare wire were to touch ground, it's going to fry the driver in this module, and that's no good. Okay, so that's going to be the test right there. So, let's plug back in. I'm just going to hit lock and see what happens. Nothing. Lock, nothing. No light. Let me make sure my... Wow. Let me make sure my test light lights. That'd be a good idea. Wasn't even hooked up. Okay, let me try again. Depending on our results here. I need to check my test light make sure it lights on one of these fuses. Okay, it does. Test light definitely lights. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can see it. Okay. So another issue is, is doors open. So I've got that test light hooked back up there. See, in order for me to shut the door, I need to find a different ground location because I'm using the door hinge. Oh my goodness. Let me try and grab something underneath of here that's metal that will serve my purposes. Let me try that. Hmm. Can I get this little bolt? Is that gonna work? Unplug that. Okay. Test our lights when it finds battery positive. That was a little weird. I just heard a very strange noise. So I've got my test light there now. I'm gonna shut the door. There's the lock position, nothing, nothing on the test light. It's not lighting. So my next question is, can we lock these doors by jumping this to power? Yep, we certainly can. 
So I'm just using my test light to uh, touch one of these fuses and uh, confirm that the doors are locking. So what I'm doing is I'm touching this fuse and when I'm touching that fuse I'm sending power through this lead to that splice that we have up there you know over this through this test lead and to the power uh, we're providing power to all four of the latches and I'm able to lock them I can hear them locking let me do that a few more times so you, just so you can hear it let me uh, find a fuse again so hopefully that's showing up well so what do we know? We know that the input is there. No question. Um, this is looking like a bad body computer, uh, without a doubt. Based on the fact that our fuses are good, um, we're not worried about the ground side fuse because I can provide power on this pin and the doors are locking. Um, and regardless, that wouldn't matter anyways because the, the grounded fuse on this particular relay, the lock relay, the only time that would matter would be unlocking the other doors. So you know that that provides the ground for all of the latches when the uh, when the switch is pressed into the unlock position. So it's definitely a little like a bad body computer. Um, I kind of just want to look at the diagram one more time just to sort of go over everything we found and then uh, potentially make the call on this. As far as powers and ground checks on all of this, I don't really think it's necessary. The BCM is alive, it's awake, it's talking to us. No problem there. Um, yeah, let's just look at the diagram real quick and see see what happens. I'm almost wondering if whatever was wired into here is what actually killed the BCM at this point because there was definitely something wired there, uh, probably some sort of aftermarket alarm system. But let's take a look at the diagram. So I kind of wanted to go old school and talk about what we found on this car and go through this diagram. So the first check that we did was we went to fuse number 70 and we checked it for power and we had power there what that told us is we also have power on the load and control sides of the center lock relay now we did do that with a you know run of the mill test light not the best load on there but for testing purposes our control and load side feeds are there um, what we also did as we went down here, this is, this is the wire that goes down to all the latches. This goes down to a splice, and that splice is going to feed all of the latches in the vehicle. And when this relay is energized, it's going to send power down, down this wire, to that splice, to all of the latches, and it's going to lock the doors. Okay? Now, what we did was, is we checked for power here in the lock position. We didn't have it. It wasn't there. And then we took our test light, basically jumped this wire to battery positive. Oh my gosh, I hate mechanical pencils. To battery positive and all the doors locked. So what that tells us is wiring integrity all the way out to the latches is good. No problem there. Um, this relay, it's integral to the body computer. So really the only thing we'd be worried about is we'd be worried about the control side to the relay. and. Um, What we would really be worried about there is we would be worried about the body computer not providing a ground and energizing this relay. Now there's no way we can test the circuitry without pulling the body computer apart, but what we know is we know that the inputs are, the inputs there, the inputs good. So I'm gonna go to the switch of this thing. There it is. We'll take a little look at the driver's side door lock switch. So taking a quick look at this switch and sort of how it works, um, it's a pull down design switch. We can see that this switch receives a ground all the time and then depending on switch position it's going to ground one of two circuits. Either this gray yellow circuit, we can follow that up and that goes to door lock, body computer, or the violet with gray, we can follow that up, it goes to door unlock and the body computer. Um, it shares a common splice with the passenger side door lock switch. We know that input's good because we had a data PID response on the scan tool when we moved this thing to the lock position. So 
I'm comfortable with calling it right now, but this thing needs a body computer. Um, and really, that's all there is to it. In a failure like this, I don't really see the point of doing powers and grounds, and here's the reason why. One, the unlock feature works. Two, we have communication with the body computer. It's able to do all sorts of other awesome high-speed stuff all over this car. And the only thing it really can't do is lock the doors. Here's sort of my hypothesis about why this thing failed, because I don't, I don't believe that this was just a, a manufacturer defect. I think that this was caused. Um, we found that one wire that was spliced into it. Um, I think potentially what may have happened to this thing is that wire at some point in time was shorted to ground and potentially fried the driver out. Um, not sure. Uh, could be an issue with the relay inside of the body computer too. Could be an issue with that board. Um, I don't know, I almost want to do some more digging into where these fault codes are coming from that we're seeing as far as these, uh, these switch status, whatever faults. So maybe we'll take one quick look back at the scan tool before we 100% call this thing as needing a BCM. So just to reiterate the fact that our inputs are there and um, really I don't, I don't really see a reason to go any further. I'm just going to redo that lock and unlock test. I mean, we don't need to be worried about these switches or anything. So two pins on the scan tool, all door unlock, all door unlock. I'm going to hit unlock first. We can see that that goes to on. So we can see that pin refresh every time I hit the switch. Now we're going to do the lock. One, we hear the horn beeping that confirms that the BCM received that. You know, hit it again. So the BCM is definitely receiving command to lock and unlock these doors, and um, it's just it's just not doing it. So, given the aftermarket crap that was wired in here, um, given the fact that everything else with this body computer is functional, I'm confident with calling a bad BCM at this point. Um, the only thing I'm curious about is uh, I wonder if we can get it working. So, I realize it's dark, and I realize. That sucks. Um, but I need the doors closed for this. So if I hit the lock button right now, nothing happens. The doors are not locking. I can still open this door up, open just fine. What I've got here uh, is a mallet. I'm going to take this mallet and I'm just going to sort of coax this BCM around. I'm going to see if these doors lock. I don't know if this is going to work, but I just, I really want to prove that this call is accurate. I'm not even sure where to, where to stress this box at. And you know, I don't think it's going to work just because I think the driver's cooked. I think that's what's wrong with it. Just sort of pushing on the box a few different places. Hmm. Nah, no dice. Um, I guess one last thing we could do, and the reason the reason I'm trying to prove this to you it's so hard. Enjoy the nightmare face. Is this better? <laughs> the reason I'm trying so hard to prove it is not because I don't believe it's the right call. It's more because I just want to prove it to you. I don't have the ability to do programming, and this thing's going to have to go to the dealer to be programmed. And oftentimes when we send cars off for that, I don't see them again, which means I'm not going to be able to film the after. So that's where I'm at. That's why I want to try and figure out a way to prove it. I think I might pull this box out and tear it apart. I don't know, let me look at it. So what I've done is I've removed the box. Um, you know, it's not very hard to do on this particular vehicle. And uh, I'm certainly glad that I did because for one, you can't pull this box apart. It's, it's all just sort of one unit, no way to pull it apart. But 
I was taking a look in all of these connectors to see if there were any corrosion issues or anything like that, and I didn't see any, okay? Now, I want to show you what I did find, and uh, it's something that we missed in the car, and it's something that almost bit us. Let me, let me turn this around. So if you look at the way this fuse box is labeled, and it's, it's tough to see in real life, so it's definitely tough to see on camera. Let me get this light out of here, maybe. It's got these numbers. Let me see if I can zoom into one, maybe. I don't know if it's going to focus. These, they're so, so hard to see. There's numbers on here. You can see it there, maybe, with the light contrast. They're, too, they're super hard to see. It was almost impossible to see down in the car. Now, the fuse that is the power feed to the control and load side of the uh, lock relay is fuse number 70. And that's right here, okay? Now, when I check this fuse in the car, given how these were laid out and how difficult it was to see, I thought this was the fuse. You could probably go back on camera and see that pretty easily. I thought this was the fuse. Guys, fuse 70 slot, it's actually this one. And uh, we can pretty clearly see there's nothing there. It's empty. Why is it empty? I don't know. Um, so here's what I want to do, that being said. I was pretty sure this is a BCM. It's a little embarrassing, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, what's funny is putting a BCM in it would have fixed it because it probably would have came with all the fuses. But anyways, I'm glad that I pulled it out to have a better look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fuse back in here. I'm going to reinstall it. Luckily, it's pretty easy to uh, get in and out. Uh, the connectors come apart real easy, and it just sort of snaps into place underneath the dash. I'm going to get that fuse put in, and we're going to see if the doors lock. So let's see what happens. So I've got the body computer reinstalled back to its uh, appropriate location. And as you can see, that fuse is now in place. So we're just going to see if the doors lock. Man. Imagine that. So, a fuse was missing. Um, I think it's safe to say that this old girl is no virgin. Someone's been here, someone's been messing around. Why? I don't know. This is a used car. Um. This is kind of funny because I, I remember Tommy over at Positive Lead Diagnostics, he had a video sort of similar to this where uh, he was suspecting that a transmission control module was faulty because uh, he had no communication to it, you know, whatever. And um, it all came down to a fuse that was missing. And, you know, it was on the Volkswagen diagram suck. Uh, okay, ours is a little different. Um, in terms of the fact that the module was still alive, it was still performing other functions, but we had no door lock operation. Um, as far as why that fuse was missing, I don't know. Um, it looked to me, when I first looked down there, the fuse that was in question was the one to the right of it. But again, those numbers are so faint. I mean, you can barely see them. I have 20-20 vision, and I can barely see them. You can barely see it with the box out of the car. So kind of a good thing that we pulled it out to look at it, but uh, really what this is all boiling down to is the fuse that's missing. Um, a little bit embarrassing, I guess, to do this long of a video on a missing fuse. Um, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Real world diagnosis, real world vehicle. But anyways, we got this thing working right. Uh, all the doors are locking. All the doors are unlocking. And hey, it's a free fix other than the diagnostic charge. So. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, that's going to be pretty much it. Um, any questions, leave them down in the comments. Any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.